If you search up questions for residency or fellow interviews, you'll find a lot, most of them bad. In this video, you're going to learn the five questions that you're going to want the answers to and the three questions that will help you wind up on their rank order list. All right, so there are five questions that you want to cover either directly or indirectly when you're asking them. What does the job involve? You guys know what the job involves here. So it's rare that this one would really need to be asked. However, keep it in the back of your head, kind of understand what is it that the job involves that you may want to get more out of. Don't ask about call schedules. Don't ask about meal allowances. Don't ask about benefits. You all get all of those things, okay? All residency programs provide them to some degree or the other. They will usually give you information on their benefits, okay? You don't need to ask about that during the residency. What are the skills a top employee in this job would have? So what you want to say is, what, what are the skills that you're really looking for in the variety of residents that you're hiring? So then that way, if you didn't touch on skills that you have already, now they can actually give you more feedback on what they're exactly looking for. In your head, you want to say, are these the kinds of people that I want to work with? Now, this one's important because you need to then show them who you are and why you stand out. If we like each other, we both want to work together. How do you persuade them that you're the most unique person out of all hundreds of thousands of applicants? And then finally, can I persuade them to hire me with certain blemishes on my application or certain things that are not as stellar on my application? In a real job, it's more about at the salary I need or want. But uh, for you guys, it's more about what's on your application that you need to, you know, what, can I persuade them to hire me despite the fact I went to SGU? And again, I'm not putting it on SGU. This is something that makes it a little bit more difficult for you guys to compete against other um, special, uh, other schools, which is not fair. All right. But really, no matter what, this is what you got. Tons of questions, but these are what you got to ask. You're going to see a bunch of crap online about what you should ask. Don't ask any of the crap that you see online. All right. What do you feel the program does a really great job in that is not well known in the medical community? So this, the, asking this way in advance of the interviews is what I want you to do to alumni or to people who work there now. If you're not able to do that, ask this on your interview. This is a powerful question. Um, I, have the, I have a history of being able to do certain things and are there uh, is there opportunities um, for me to do those things? And here's an example of what I mean. I have a background in big data analysis and an MPH. Are there research teams collecting large data sets that I can work with to analyze lead level risk factors? All right, so take something that's in your history, something that you would like to do and be sincere about it, not like some BS that you're never gonna get to and try to work it into if, there, if that opportunity is there. This is a gold question to ask at the end of your interview, okay? Um, Skip that one. And then finally, you know, I look forward to joining you in July. This, again, this is another wonderful question to ask program directors. I look forward to joining you in July. Over the next several months, what do you recommend I look into? You know, what should I be reading about or learning to hit the ground running when I start back here um, at Arizona State University? When you ask that question, it's doing a few things. One, it forces them to then give you advice. When someone gives you advice, they automatically will start to like you a little better. They don't dis or they don't dislike you nearly as much as they did because you're complimenting them and their knowledge by asking them for advice. Another thing that that does is when you say hit the ground running at SUNY Downstate, hit the ground running at Woodhall Hospital, you are giving them the opportunity to picture you as a resident in their program. And if they take even just a moment to picture you as a resident in their program, they are much more likely to evaluate you better from that interview and rank you higher. Now, it all depends on who's interviewing you at all these programs. Um, sometimes you'll meet with the program director, sometimes you won't. Smaller programs, you definitely will. Bigger ones, you may not. It may just be an associate program director. And they have a scoring system that they try to rank you as. But by doing these things, and they can picture you there, and they feel that you like them because you're asking for advice, they will fight for you more over somebody else of equal strength 
when they're doing their rank order list, all right? This is a super important question to end with. I can, and you can ask the, these, these questions that I put up here, you can ask to every single person that you talk to, okay? Don't worry, they, they don't compare answers or anything like that. They don't say, oh, what did he ask you? What did she ask you? So ask these to everybody. I cannot stress that enough. Um, these things are your friends. They are also your worst enemies. I suggest deactivating your Facebook account today. Deactivate your Instagram account today. Deactivate any social media account today. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, start one today or tomorrow because you were busy trying to figure out how to deactivate Facebook. I'm not saying delete it, just deactivate it for a while. LinkedIn, make sure your CV is thrown up onto your LinkedIn profile with the same picture that you have on, or if you don't have a good picture on your um, application, put a nicer picture on your LinkedIn profile. To get an idea of what you might want to do, fill out every single field too in that LinkedIn profile. Don't leave things empty. It takes a long time to do it right. Um, you can look up mine. It's, I think it's LinkedIn slash Mike Keenahan. Um, to give you an idea of like how extensive you can fill out a profile. And then finally down here, doximity. Um, doximity is, I think medical students and I think SGU students can be on doximity. Make sure you get and own your doximity profile. Once you have a doximity profile, that usually jumps to the top of Google when people Google your, Google your name. All right. So if you have LinkedIn and you have Doximity here, the chances of people being able to Google you and finding what you want them to find skyrockets and make sure you turn off Facebook and everything else. Mm -hmm.